Brighton run season. So we've got this 1904 Dietrich. So it's a 24 horsepower. It's the London to Brighton, the veteran run. The veteran car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I took it on an event over by the RAC club in that Woodcut Park at Epsom. Right. A few weeks yeah. ago. Okay. So it's up and running and working. It's up and running. Yeah. There's a few issues with it, which I'm just sorting out before we take it on the sure. drive run. Even the but engine looks obscure. I've never driven anything like this. It, this yeah. is all pedals the wrong way around. No, no, it's all no. conventional it's pedals. You know, clutch, brake and accelerator. Okay. Brakes. Handbrake. Yeah. Gear change, but it's what's called a quadrant change. So you don't go through a gate. You've got to go through first to get the second. Okay. Just like a motorbike, basically. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Cutting it down like And yeah. then backwards for reverse, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah. It, we've, we've had this car in here for 50 years. And it's know. not been restored? It's, it's had, had, a, it's had a paint job. Yeah. Um, um, but it's, it's basically, basically the same body. Yeah, that yeah. all looks as could be original. Or very that very is, that is original. We yeah. had to do the seat cushions because they just fell apart, basically. Beautiful uh, thing. Yeah, so that's one of the prep cars we're preparing for the for the bright run. You, and you see the wooden wheels? Yeah, that's You probably walk, walk past the wheel. Wheel right, and, yeah, yeah. And his father did these wheels. 50 years 30 ago. Years 30 ago. years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got a connection with, with the Garners, you know. Four-cylinder Daimler, very rare four-cylinder Daimlers. Okay. Uh, this is all completely foreign to me. I've never worked on anything even anywhere near as old as Well, you know where an engine works. I get the gist yeah. of it, but yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. So you've got the engine here, the, the main blocks and the crankcase. Yeah. And the pistons run up and down inside. But everything out is on the outside. This is the camshaft. The can is outside. There's the camshaft, and these are all the... The, 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 all the lifters and the rods yeah, it's all for the exhaust valves, but only the exhaust valves. Because so under there is the inlet valves, and they're what, called, uh, what are called atmospheric inlet valves. So there's no mechanical operation to the inlet valves. It's just onto vacuum. Or Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So the piston sucks the, suck the valves well, open. And pushes them open. And there's a light yeah. spring in there, so it helps shut them, and, the, and, and that's it. You've got no control over the inlet valves at all. So, uh, so it's just bouncing up and down about 200 times a second. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. So, that, that made, what's, how is all that oil? It must go everywhere. Well, it is. It does, yeah. <laughs> it's called a total loss oil system. And yeah. It, and it, you top it up before the run and yeah, it all just sprays there's, everywhere. There's a tank on the bulkhead there with a little pump. You see all those pipes alongside that? That's all the oily. It, it just drips oil, oil yeah. and it just internals, yeah. it lubricates the externals and the internals and it just. Like a sort of bridge port boil, like Basically. a mill or something, isn't yeah. it? It's got like that kind of oiling system that's just... Yeah, so you don't want to ride a motorbike for the A23 after the Brighton run. Oh, yeah, I'll follow yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And <laughs> a cloud of smoke. So this car's done... Well, I've been here 44 years and this car's done every run, as far as I'm virtually... Well it's used. Yeah, but it's it. good and it looks it as well, yeah. you know, it kind of wears its bits it of is. stains and marks here and there proudly, doesn't it? Well, it does, yeah. Beautiful. I mean, I mean, these are relatively new because the original ones corroded away, so we've had to remake those. But the rest of the radiator is yeah. 1903. That's all machine. It's all so, machine. Yeah. I was going to get it 3D printed and scanned, and but it, it became too... Uh, it's nice. Too awkward, so... Do you have the machinery to do that here? No, I had to send no. it out. Oh, yeah. Right, so I had it scanned, and, and, uh, and that sent off to the yeah, CNC machine. That's very cool. Yeah. They did get it wrong, though, of course. Yeah, they got... Because it's hanked. Because it's hanked. <laughs> they sort of did two the same. Not a mirror image. it doesn't work. You know, so. <laughs> Oh no, this looks like a disaster. That, it was a disaster. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. So that is... <laughs> <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a few engines that have done this over the years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, no. That's the 350 oh. horsepower sun, otherwise known as Bluebird. You can see on the walls there, up the top there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Malcolm Campbell there. That is the Bluebird. The Bluebird, Bluebird 1 if you like. It was originally called the 350 horsepower Sunbeam until Campbell bought it off a of Sunbeam and renamed it Bluebird. Bluebird. So this is this an aero, aero engine? It's an aero engine. Yeah. This, that's not the engine out of it. Is it not? Okay. But this is the engine out of it, which is very similar to, the, to these engines. Yeah. Um, but in 1994, it decided to throw a rod out the side. That one there. Yeah. So it came through the side of the block there. Ooh. Big hole in a sump. Destroyed the pistons. Um, so and a lot more along with it, I'm sure. Well, yeah, yeah. but it, we, we were lucky, basically. Yeah. 
So we've managed to, well, it took me 10 years to do it. 10 years? Yeah, because of budgetary issues, yeah. you know, so like no money. So I've had to beg, borrow and steal everything to get wow. it done, but we've managed to do it. So where is this now? It's out in the museum. Is the blue, that, that car? Yeah. Is it yeah. here? It's here. Oh, can we have a look? We can have can a look, go? yeah. <laughs> can we go? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have, we because it's one of its, it's a lot of anniversaries this year for that car. Right. 22, it took its last land speed record at Brooklands. Right. So we took it to Brooklands, then we ran it at Brooklands. Amazing. Then we took it to Goodwood, ran it around the circuit, then we took it to the Festival of Speed. Then we took it to Farnborough last week for the motor show. All with the engine you've rebuilt? Yep. Love it. And we've been running it around. And in two weeks' time, 20th or something like that, it's going into the RAC Club in London. Brilliant. Uh, that so must be, you're saying all that so blase, that must be quite... Quite rewarding. It is. You I mean, feel... that's that's why I'm that's why I'm here. Basically, stuff like this. Basically, yeah, yeah. Because it's big parts of my life is is, is rebuilding this. Ten stuff. years of your life yeah. working on building this engine, and then to see it go out on tour and drive exactly. around Goodwood, and yeah, it must be amazing. It is, and we're taking it back to Pendine in twenty twenty four. Literally go back in time. That would be awesome because well, that's when its next land speed record came about. Oh, okay. So that that is the first car to do one hundred and fifty mile an hour. In the land speed record. Yeah. That's so good. So we basically rebuilt it. You've probably seen them yeah. the Terry Formals over in the in the rally field there doing the white metalling. Yes, the yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the Babbitt the bearings. Yeah. 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 Well, they did all the white metalling for us. Yeah. Nothing. Which I'm also learning about a lot yeah. of that with the rattle stuff about yeah. setting those axles exactly. in Babbitt. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly. not easy. It's not easy at all. <laughs> so I got the pistons made in America. The valve springs, there's a GNS valves are in Godalming, and they're the last people that make valve springs in the country. Right, and again, just down the road. Exactly. Yeah. So I had to twist his arm a bit, but with a few, 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 because he's a scout master, we managed to get a okay. few trips for a few scouts. Yeah, yeah that's so, it, that's it, come on down. So, Amazing. and the rest of it we did ourselves, basically. It's like all the, see all the the water galleries here? Was that all broken as well? Well, yeah. they were corroded through, basically. Yeah. And um, there's 396 of those. And every one of them sheared off. Of course. Yeah. Into the, the block. Drill, yeah. tap, new bolts, oh. new plates. So thousands of hours with volunteers as well. Is this privately owned or has it been donated? It to? belongs to the museum. Does it? Yeah. yeah. We uh, took the rear engine out. Then we took the front engine oh, out. The two engines, I see. And the reason we took them out... Again. Sat. Museum itis, we call yeah, it. Basically, it just yeah. it just oh. sits and corrodes within the museum. Yeah, and you can't leave it. You can't otherwise. You know, ten years time, it's not worth doing. Yeah, basically. So we take the engine out. We strip strip the rear engine down. It took us eighteen months to take that engine apart because it was they last ran in nineteen thirty nine. Right, and they haven't run since. So they're both sued, yeah. seized up. Plus the fact it run on Castellar. Have you heard of Castellar? No, no. Castellar is a racing oil in the 20s and 30s. Okay. But it was a vegetable based oil. Literally like, <laughs> like cooking oil. Like cooking yeah, oil. Yeah. So if you leave it for any period of time, it's solidified. It's all going to go hard in the bottom of it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what caused that, basically. Oh. It was uh, an oil gallery that was blocked. Just was solidified in that tiny. Exactly. Oil. Yeah. Skittles oil starvation. Yeah. And you can see how thin that is. Yeah, when I picked it up, they're so light. Yeah, exactly. They're really light. Because it's all aircraft technology. Yeah. But you also have white metal in there as well, which is cast onto that. It, within that. Within that. So you've so got the steel there, yeah. and the white metal. And then, you know, the pistons on top of that. So yeah. that's how it should look. But when they stop rotating, that's what happens. That's what happens. <laughs> this is <clears throat> one of the pistons we took out. You can see all the rings are stuck in as well. And it's got that crowned piston. Well, that was a modification by Campbell to oh, upgrade the compression ratio. Yeah, yeah. He, he put these pistons in I to make it a texture like that. Though. Is that a valve drop and it's actually mm. destroyed it? Or is that a that's an ignition issue? Is it detonation? Is it? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I mean, it wouldn't have lasted much longer. Really. No, you know. No. So, uh, but that's um, it's a really unique piston. And you see in the middle there, there's a support which actually pushes down on the on the gudgeon oh. pin there, and you see on the yeah. On there, it's uh, to allow it's it to a slot. Was that to stop it flex? To stop the yeah, stop it um, destroying the front, 
crown with a piston, basically. They built 19 of these engines. Ever, in the world. Ever. That's in it, world. 19. They built 19. One was air tested, we know that, that's documented. Okay. But they couldn't sell any more to the air ministry. Because they didn't, there's a glut of aero engines at the first, of, right. the first World War. Yeah. Couldn't sell any. So, what to do with the engines? So, they got involved with building motorboats. Oh! They started off with a boat with one engine in it, which are, and the boats were built on the Isle of Wight by Saunders Road. And what, they, what year is this? 1920s. Oh, okay, 20s. Yeah. 20. Okay, because Randler ended up building boats on the Isle of Wight yeah. as well, but in the fir late 30s, 40s, yeah. so well, that's too early. But a lot yeah. of people were probably involved. Yeah, yeah. And then they built another engine boat with two engines in it, and they built this one, Maple Leaf 7, with four engines in it. And these are, they named all their engines after tribes, some people, the Maori, the Manitou, okay. Matabili, right. Arab, Cossack. I mean, that was their... That was their, their names. names. Yeah. So they built this boat with four engines in it, took it over to, 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 to Detroit in the USA to uh, compete in the Harmsworth Trophy like against a, a people like yeah, yeah. Miss America and things yeah, like that. Yeah. But unfortunately, when they unloaded it, they dropped it. Oh, stop. Yeah. Cracked the hull, but they patched it all back together. It didn't sink. No, they got it. Okay. So they did a few test runs, brought it back to the jetty where it did sink. So those four engines went to the bottom of Detroit. Oh, so they're gone. No, yeah. they dragged the boat up, <laughs> took it home, took the engines out of it. Those engines kicked around the, the Sunbeam Works for another few years. Yeah. And then they put two of those engines here in the car. In the car, yeah. And these are the only two that survive. Wow. Because they were in the car. All the rest got scrapped and got rid of. So that's it? That's it. Two engines. Two engines. Two yeah, Matabili survive. Yeah. One engine runs one way, and one engine runs the other way. Because they butt up against each other in the car, flywheel to flywheel, and on the boat they have counter rotating engines. So where's the where's drive coming from then? In, in the car? In, in the, the drive. The flywheel's butting up to each other's chain exactly. drive or something. Or so what yeah. happens is in between the engines, you've got a solid shaft between the two engines. But on with, that engine, with like a, a, clutch, gear, a gear coming off of it or there's something. There's a clutch on the end. If you look right down the other end, this, this is the other one. Yeah. That's, that's the front engine, yeah. And there's a clutch there, yeah, which is hand operated. So um, you start the rear engine on compressed air, yeah. And once that's running, you engage the clutch, and nah, it bump starts, starts this one, yeah. And because of the clutch, it allows it to synchronize itself. So on that sh shaft that goes through the, the middle, there's a sp spur gear actually on the shaft okay which then drives into the gearbox so there is a gearbox that yeah. Must be, yeah three speed gearbox wow and on the output side of the gearbox is two output shafts which go to sprockets because it's chain drive to the rear wheels it's a rear wheel drive yeah yeah, yeah. Rear wheel drive yeah love it so okay. clever right. when this was on the boat going to or the ship going to america to do its record yeah at daytona that's when Parry Thomas crashed the Babs and it killed him. Oh my goodness. And one of the theories was that the chain snapped and it decapitated. It flailed off and kind of... Yeah. That's never been proved, but... Uh, the but history is amazing, isn't it amazing? It is. But while this was over on the ship going to, to, to America, they heard of Parry Thomas's death. So they then uprated the chain guards on this. Right. And then heard the rumours and was like, yeah, yeah. did the record. But <clears throat> that's incredible. While we were while we were, were you know stricken this down up, up the top there is the oil tanks for the engines. Okay. Yeah. It's a dry sump system, so it's a, it just scavenges the oil output. Yeah. Oil it's oil there. Tanks. Yeah. And as as I was saying about Castellar, it's um it solidifies basically. So we were trying to get the oil out of the oil tanks, and we've got a tank over there which we. Got an immersion Warm heater in up it. And basically, yeah. Hot water detergent. We just leave it in there for a week yeah. to get the oil and stuff off it. Yeah. But when we were shaking the, the oil out of that one, and we had heard this horrible rattle inside it, and the baffles come loose inside Some, the tank. Yeah. And whatever, and we kept on, on shaking it, shaking it, and shaking it, and eventually that fell out of it. Oh, I've got a screwdriver exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the first screwdriver. Oh, it's a shorter version. 200 mile an hour. That was in the tank yeah. whilst it was doing the... Yeah. 
No way. So, so an engineer was no. obviously dipping the oil tank. Yeah. Dropped or, it in or, or knocked it off the side and went in yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. So that's been there ever since until we took it out. That's so funny. Yeah. Will you put it back in? That's the big question. No, we're, we're, we're going to keep it out because it's a nice talking point. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. As long as it stays with the car. Oh, it stays with the car. Exactly. Everything will stay with the car. That's so funny. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. There's so many stories here. It is. If you're standing here in front of this, though, so that's an incredible. Well, it's a phenomenal engine. Isn't it? There's only two in the world. And they're, and they're both, both here. here. And the, the, the one in the, uh, the 350 Sunbeam is probably the only. There's a there's a Sunbeam engine in America that will run, but it's been well and truly gone. Yeah, basically. yeah. This runs as it should do on magnetos and proper carburetors and things like yeah, that. Yeah, love it. So out of all the back, all Sunbeam engines that were built, we have the three that will run. Originally. Nice ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, let me know if you want to sell it. <laughs> <laughs>